So I figured I'd do a quick little commentary on my modeling process of creating this cable splitter. So this whole thing took me about two hours, roughly, and it's sped up to be just under 10 minutes. Um, I use Fusion 360 for modeling uh, pretty much all the time uh, for CAD related products, things like that. So I started off with these splines for each of the cables and then this little box where they join together where the split happens. Just sketching everything in, getting rough proportions down. Um, yeah, I, I'm, not the, I'm not the best at modeling. I, I, I use this software when I need to create a product for rendering. I don't do design for manufacture. I don't render or I don't model things that go into production per se. So I don't need a ton of control in my modeling tools. Uh, Fusion 360 works for my needs. So that's what I work with. Uh, anyway, so what I did here is I basically am building this plastic part that splits the cables. And uh, here you can see I, I used three sketches and then did a loft between them. And I wasn't real happy with the shape that was taking place. So I started using some control curves or splines to, um, or rails, I guess, to guide the shape. Um, and then here you can see I'm, I'm it was kind of lumpy on top and bottom. So I needed to add some more guide rails. And then, you know, I was looking at the surface here with the zebra stripes. Uh, Fusion 360, again, its strengths are definitely not surfacing, but also I am not good at surfacing. So uh, here you can see I was just kind of being lazy, you know, throwing some fillets on there. I wasn't real happy with how that looked, but I decided I would uh, just take this where it was at and then come back later if I needed to mess with it. I wanted to focus on the rest of it. Now here this is something interesting. So I'm, I'm moving the spline into the rough position or shape that I want it to be in. And this is something looking back, I could have probably saved a little time by not doing that. It would have been maybe a little faster and easier if I kept this spline on a single plane, like on a flat plane, because sketching out this profile here for the 3.5 millimeter uh, audio jack was a little tedious. And when I started dimensioning it, I had dimensions going on different planes and everything like that. So that was a little bit uh, not so ideal, I guess. But I was stubborn and I didn't want to go back and fix it. Um, so I just kind of kept messing with it here. This part's not really exciting. This is me just throwing in tons of dimensions roughly. And then later I went ahead and measured with um, like a caliper to dial these in. That's one thing I, I like to do is always, if I can have an example in my hands so I can take measurements and look at proportions and stuff. So here I just basically did the profile of that part and then I revolved it around the midline. Looks like I must have gotten up or took a, taken a break there for a second. Um, so yeah, now just kind of fixing those dimensions a little bit here. And um, you'll see eventually where this goes. The nice way about building this the way I did is that I could later move that spline into whatever position I needed it to. And then more or less the, you know, if, I, if you constrain it right, your sketch that is, then the, you know, object or the body will follow that spline. And this is something I found having to do lots of cords and cables in my in, in the past. I found this is a decent way. I could probably do a bit more of a condensed and refined tutorial on this, I guess. Not this exact object, but I mean creating cords and cables for product renderings and then um, being able to reposition them after you've modeled the object. Cause that's one thing that's kind of tough in, in CAD. In poly modeling, it's easy to push and pull surfaces around. It's a little trickier or, you know, not as easy in, you know, CAD applications. Anyway, so here I'm just doing a simple pipe command on that spline. That's what I'm doing to turn those into cables. 
Um, and then I think at this point I wanted to go back and try to make this plastic part where the cable split not so big. It looks like I just kind of, because I didn't have this product, I was just kind of eyeballing it or guessing. So it was a little big, but once I, you know, I, I played around with making some changes to these dimensions and it just wasn't going as I wanted it to. So I decided to remove that body and just model a new version of it later once I was done here with these other parts. So back to the jack, the audio jack. I basically repeated the process for the female version, although it's just a much simpler shape, which is nice. Just kind of had to get the proportions right and everything since once again, I didn't have this object here with me. I couldn't take real measurements. I just, you know, had to figure out what looked right. And you, I probably could have like, I thought about making this body once and then just moving it over, copying it or inserting it into the design. But the reason I didn't want to do that is because again, I wanted the flexibility of grabbing these splines that it was built onto and then dragging the points around and having the part move, almost like grabbing the end of a rope and then just having whatever's attached to that rope move. So I just decided it would be simple enough to just redraw it. It only took probably a couple of minutes. So here we have these. And, and again, I think you'll see in a minute right here, now I'm moving that spline and everything updates. And this is this is really, like I said, the beauty or something. I, I think it's kind of a cool way to do this. Uh, before I didn't quite have a good workflow for this. So I hated modeling cords and cables. You can see here I, I mess up. Um, I didn't have this one fully constrained. So you can see at one point I moved the, the male audio jack here and it doesn't quite update properly. And then like the dimensions change and stuff. So something was going on weird. Turns out I just didn't have these the bottom of that sketch constrained. So there I fixed that and then now it updates, uh, which is really nice. And then the, the part I hate about, of course, is making all these micro adjustments, moving things so they look like they're placed naturally. Uh, and then here I, I went back and rebuilt this little plastic piece. Um, and I think I wanted, I think these cables were a little too, they looked too long. So I tried to move it around. Um, I don't know why. Oh, that was constrained to that original sketch. So I had to shorten that. Um, I did end up changing the shape here a little bit. Um, I just went with what was easy, more or less. You can see here, I was having a lot of trouble projecting these sketches for some reason. I, I had something was not right. I had missed some sort of constraint and once again it wasn't projecting right and then when I tried to do my my extrude or my loft it was just not not good and then here this this is just a simple loft and then I kind of like the that shape this new shape and then it was easier to kind of fillet those and and just make it look a little tidier uh, pushing, making little part lines where you kind of push those indents in where the cables will go in makes it look a little more realistic too. And then of course, once everything was in position, I had to look and make sure it looked like it was laying flat on a surface. So from here on this angle, you can see I draw a box that, that looks like a table or a surface. And then I just push and pull the control points for those splines. So everything looks like it's sitting, so it has some weight. So it doesn't look so rigid. And then this is again, just tediously moving each piece into the right position. And then um, of course, fillets. Now in Keyshot, you can just use the rounded edges tool. That's fine. Um, here, I, I because I thought I might be doing some macro shots, I, I like putting really small fillets on stuff. So I did that here, it was a little tedious, but whatever. And then here, I um, was trying to figure out um, how to organize these. I had I had too many bodies, so I needed to combine them into the right bodies. And then I started applying uh, just different colors, colors to different faces. The reason I do this is so when I import the model into Keyshot, each colored face will appear as a different part. So that's easy, again, just for assigning materials and stuff. You know, this is the type of thing that if a client were to give me a model, I might have to do. But there you go, that's it. So hopefully you found that useful and uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoy the tutorial that this 3D model is made for.